Uh, good morning, Conquest of Doers. Uh, it's been a busy week here at Conquest of Doe Towers, and uh, I've put out a number of blogs. Um, my research this week has actually actually um, revolved around looking at jokes and finding some jokes to put into the dialogue in Conquest of Doe. Now, one of the uh, things in Conquest of Doe, uh, here we are, there's a bit of a, a thing here. This is uh, Reedsy, which I'm actually getting the, uh, the book uh, typeset in. Uh, and the first seven chapters up to the skies falling in uh, they're they're fairly well formed now the drafts are on the blog um, but I, I want to go back in and re-edit rewrite and and um, uh, particularly the ro road to Damascus uh, thing I, I've got a an extract of a travelogue written by a, um, a G German born uh, person that was interested in seriology um, and I want to shorten that and, and actually make it more readable. Um, there is one joke in that uh, that passage uh, which is a kind of a slander on a, um, a tribe in, in, in the part of the road to Damascus they're actually overnighting in. Um, but that, that's another story. Anyway um, if you have spent any time looking at the uh, the uh, Conquest of Doe website, there is actually a uh, an illustration or picture on one of them of a vase, uh, and on that vase there's actually a picture of a bread dildo. Now, um, <coughs> I mean, I think dildos are funny. I'm not alone in history in actually thinking that and that's what this um, this this video blog is about um, last night I was or, or into the early hours of the morning I was amusing myself reading this doctoral thesis and um, I think you just introduce uh, the good doctor it's by Sandra A. Friesen, and um, it's her dissertation for a Doctor of Philosophy, and it's entitled The Rise and Fall of Signor Dildo, the figure of the dildo in restoration literature and culture. And what it does, it goes back over um, some of the uh, writings, uh, comedic and otherwise about dildos down the ages um, and Signor Dildo is actually a uh, a rhyming poem which uh, which we'll read in full shortly but here's a taster of it here in the introduction um, where uh, it, 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 it's credited to Lord Rochester and it may or may not have been written by the good Lord um, Rochester but he did actually write another very very funny satire on King Charles II which I'm also going to read in a minute and I'm going to keep this fairly short uh, but I will put links to the different sources or whatever at the bottom of the blog anyway the introduction uh, th there's this extract from Signor Dilio um, Oh, all ye young ladies of merry England that have been to kiss the Duchess's hand, I pray you inquire the next time you do go for a noble Italian called Signor Dildo. This Signor Dildo was the chief of the train that came to conduct her safe over the main. I could not in conscience but let you all know the happy arrival of Signor Dildo. You will take him at first for no person of note, because he'll appear in a plain leather coat. 
But when you his virtuous abilities know, you'll fall down and worship the Signor Dildo. <laughs> um, now, we'll read all of that one in a minute. Um, but uh, uh, this is, uh, well, almost 300 pages long, um, and there's plenty of material in here. Um, it, it, the dry passages in between uh, some of it are, are, although obviously very, very well observed and tightly argued, are actually hilarious to read because they're so incongruent with the, <laughs> with, you know, the language is, is academic and, and, and it just jars with the, you know, the, the hilarity of the, uh, of, 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 of the, the, <laughs> the membership, as it were, of the characters. Um, but anyway, so that's, that, that, that's this, um, which sort of, uh, has kind of entered into the to, to the, the the back end of my my researches, as it were. The other thing I've noticed reading this is that there's lots of uh, or double entendre, which which, which um, intended or not, uh, had me sniggering away. Um, so anyway, John Wilmot, second Earl of R Rochester. What else have we got here? Uh, this is the full. Um, uh, Sidney Dildo, uh, just in terms of methodology, back back here. Um, uh, I've got one uh, chapter called Radishes and Dildos, um, and ra Radishes, because um, it's a contemporary novel that goes back into history and stuff, uh, I'm uh, writing a passage of the Judas um, uh, a cedar which which Jeremy Corbyn attended, uh, famously taking radishes, and radishes were actually a uh, prescribed uh, punishment for adulterers in Roman times. Um, I won't go into that further, but it's in the book. Um, then I've got the wheat and the chessboard problem, uh, actuality and other economies, action and history, and Glastonbury and glamping, which is the sort of you know the that's the romp that ends it all and brings this all together um, but uh, I've been dropping in my uh, uh, material for the jokes onto reads the ready now to extract them and actually write the chapters uh, you can see here there's 116,000 words now of notes within the 16 chapters. Uh, so uh, yeah, I am making progress, he says, trying to convince himself. So, uh, just, 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 just here now of where we're up to. Um, radishes and dildos, Glastonbury. Uh, here are... Uh, a couple of definitions. Um, where are we? Nathaniel Bailey of the Dictorium Britannicum. A dildo from the Italian diletto, uh, a woman's delight, or from our word uh, dally, a thing to play with. Uh, so a dalliance is a diletto is a dildo, a dalliance with a dildo. Uh, lots of lots of interesting. Uh, uh, tongue play there, shall we say. Um, a classical dictionary of the vulgar tongue. I do like that, I must get a copy. Uh, dildo, an implement resembling the virile member for which it is said to be substituted by nuns, boarding, miss school misses, and others obliged to celibacy or fearful of pregnancy. Dildos are made of wax, horn, leather, and diverse other substances, including bread, uh, conquest of Boas. Uh, and if fame does not lie more than usually, are to be had at many of our great toy shops and the knick-knackateries. I do like that word, knick-knackateries. Um, now then, this is the satire on uh, Charles II, uh, a shorter ditty from the Earl of Rochester. 
So um, at some point during the Christmas festivities at court in 1673, Charles II and the Earl of Rochester got talking about a lampoon that was doing the rounds at Whitehall and the king asked to see a copy. That lampoon may well have been Signor Dildo, we do not know, but, but um, rummaging drunkenly through his pockets, Rochester accidentally gave him the manuscript of his own satire on Charles II instead. Charles may have been the easiest king and the best bred man alive, as the poem begins by saying, but not even he could shrug off, for instance, Rochester's account of the pains it costs poor laborious Neri, whilst she employs hands, fingers, mouth and thighs, ere she can mount the member she enjoys. Uh, Rochester had to flee the court and lie low uh, for a while. So here, here, here's... Um, the Earl of Rochester, John Wilmot's um, edited and annotated Jack Lynch um, uh, offering of uh, Rochester's uh, satire on Charles II. Um, this is another story, uh, a letter of 20th January 6th to explain the story behind this poem. My Lord Rochester fled from court sometime for some time since for delivering by mistake into the king's hands a terrible lampoon of his own making against the king instead of another the king had asked of him. Oh, it's the same story, so here we, here, here we go. Uh, let's just get that on the screen. In the Isle of Britain, long since famous grown for breeding the best cunts in Christendom, there reigns and oh long may he reign and thrive the easiest king and best-bred man alive. Him no ambition moves to get renown, like the French fool that wanders up and down, starving his people, hazarding his crown. Peace is his aim, his gentleness is such, and love he loves, for he loves fucking much. Nor are his high desires above his strength, his sceptre and his prick are of a length, and she may sway the one who plays with the other, and make him little wiser than his brother. Poor prince, thy prick like thy buffoons at court, will govern thee because it makes thee sport. Tis sure the sortiest prick that e'er did swive, the proudest, preemptorest prick alive, though safety, law, religion, life lay on would break through all to make its way to a cunt. Restless he rolls from whore to whore, a merry monarch, scandalous and poor. To Carwell, the most dear of all his dears, the best relief of his declining years, oft he bewails his fortune and her fate, to love so well and be loved so late. For through in her settles well his task, yet his dull graceless bollocks hang an ass. This you'd believe, and I but time to tell ye, the pains it costs to poor laborious Nelly, while she employs hands, fingers, mouth and thighs, ere she can raise the member she enjoys. All monarchs I hate and the thrones they sit on, from the Hector of France to the Cully of Britain. So there you have uh, um, the satire on Charles II by the Earl of Rochester. Um, and uh, moving swiftly on, uh, this is Signor Dildo, uh, also attributed to John Wilmot, Earl of Rochester. The poem apparently dates from late 1663, shortly after Mary of Medina arrived in London. It first appeared in print in 1703 in Poems on Affairs of State. You ladies all of merry England, who have been to kiss the Duchess's hand, pray did you lately observe in the show a noble Italian called Signor Dildo? The Signor was one of Her Highness's train, and helped to conduct her over the main. But now she cries out to the Duke, I will go, I have no more need for Signor Dildo. 
at the sign of the cross in St. James Street, when next you go thither to make yourself sweet, by buying of powder, gloves, essence, or so, you may chance get a sight of Signor Dildo. You'll take him at first for no person of note, because he appears in a plain leather coat. But when you his virtuous abilities know, you'll fall down and worship Signor Dildo. My Lady Southusk, heavens prosper her fort, first clothed him in satin, then brought him to court. But his head in the circle he scarcely durst show, so modest a youth was Signor Dildo. The good Lady Suffolk, thinking no harm, had got his poor stranger hid under her arm. Lady Betty by chance came the secret to know, and from her own mother stole Signor Dildo. The Countess of Falmouth, of whom people tell, her footmen wear shirts of a guinea anel, might save the expense if she did but know how lusty a swinger is Signor Dildo. By the help of this gallant, the Countess of Wrath, against the fierce Harris preserved herself safe. She stiffed him almost beneath her pillow, so closely she embraced Signor Dildo. Our dainty fine duchess have got a trick to dote on a fool for the sake of his prick. The fops were undone, did their graces but know the discretion and vigour of Signor Dildo. The pattern of virtue, her grace of Cleve Lund, has swallowed more pricks than the ocean has sand. But by rubbing and scrubbing so large it does grow, it is fit for just nothing but Signor Dildo. The Duchess of Medina, though she looks high, with such a gallant is contented to lie, and for fear the English her secrets should know, for a gentleman usher took Signor Dildo. The Countess of the Cockpit, who knows not her name, she's famous in story for a killing dame. When all her lovers forsake her, I trow, she'll then be contented with Signor Dildo. Red Howard, Red Sheldon, and Temple so tall, complain of her absence so long from Whitehall. Signor Bernard has promised a journey to go, and bring back his countryman, Signor Dildo. Doll Howard no longer with his highness must range, and therefore is preferred this civil exchange. Her teeth being rotten, she smells best below, and needs must be fitted for Signor Dildo. St. Albans with wrinkles and smiles in his face, whose kindness to strangers becomes his high place. In his coach and six horses is gone to Burgo to take the fresh air with Signor Dildo. Were the Signor but known to the citizen fops, he'd keep their fine wives from the foreman of shops. But the rascals deserve their horns should still grow. For burning the Pope and his nephew, Dildo, Tom Kilgrew's wife, North Holland's fine flower, At the sight of this signor did fart and belch tower, And her Dutch breeding father to show, Says, Welcome to England, mine here, Van Dildo. He civilly came to the cockpit one night, And preferred his service to fair Madam Knight. Quoth she, I intrigue with Captain Cazo, Your nose in mine arse, good signor, Dildo. This senior is sound, safe, ready, and dumb, as ever was candle, carrot, or thumb. Then away with these nasty devices and show how you rate the just merits of Signor Dildo. Count Cazzo, who carries his nose very high, in passion he swore his rival should die, then shut himself to let the world know flesh and blood could not bear it from Signor Dildo. A rabble of pricks who were welcome before, now finding the porter denied them the door, maliciously waited his coming below, and inhumanly fell on Signor Dildo. Night wearied out, the poor stranger did fly, and along the Pall Mall they followed full cry. The women concerned from every window cried, Oh, for heaven's sake, save Signor Dildo. The good lady Sandys burst into laughter to see how the bollocks came wobbling after and had not their weight retarded the, retarded the foe, indeed had gone hard with Signor Dildo. <laughs> so, 
And there you have John Wilmot's uh, Signor Dildo. And um, just wrapping up on this, uh, this theme, um, another thing that I've been uh, mining, as it were, uh, are the lyrics of the uh, Jelly Roll Morton uh, old jazz blues from turn of the century of oh, Fin de Cicla, New Orleans and um, uh, they're available on the internet. I did a blog with a couple of links. Uh, one longer one was um, Make Me a Pallet on the Floor, which is really quite funny. The introduction is uh, really hilariously obscene. Um, and uh, there was this song, The Dirty Dozen. Um, and uh, they're sort of interesting uh, rhyming with it. So the Dirty Dozen starts off with, Oh, you dirty mother sucker, you old cock sucker, you dirty son of a bitch, you bastard, you're everything, and your mummy don't wear no drawers. Yes, you did me this, you did me that, you did your father, you did your mother, you did everyone you come to, because your mummy don't wear no drawers. That's the dirty dozen, oh, the dirty dozen, the dirty dozen, yo, your mother don't wear no drawers. And it goes on, um, and uh, it's, it, it, it's bound to shock. Uh, the good thing about those are that the, the, the lyrics are beautifully delivered um, along with this wonderful sort of um, very sort of free New Orleans jazz sort of roll. Uh, it's, it's beautiful. I <laughs> thought Jerry was Jelly Roll Norton. And um, uh, if, if you're not accustomed to listening to lyrics, you might just put it on. Um, and... Uh, uh, and therein, you know, um, play some Jerry Roll Morton because the vicar likes jazz, and uh, uh, and and there you have uh, uh, an interesting incongruity, as it were. So um, again, um, I'm working on a number of these themes and the stories in the in the book as we go uh, with the characters. Um, so it's been an amusing week in many respects. Um, uh, looking at these these different themes, I, I hope you enjoyed the uh, the update as as, as far as it goes.